getting some more snow today. It's cold out. At least we're not on mud this time, so we can't get stuck. And honestly, there wasn't even snow supposed to be in the forecast today. There wasn't even really supposed to be rain, but last night I got probably the worst night's sleep that I've ever gotten. Because one, it was freezing cold out, and two, because this street sweeper was cleaning the parking lot that I'm currently sleeping in until like 1.30, 1.45 a.m. And I'll play the sound it was playing for like two and a half hours last night when I was trying to sleep. It was like this rhythmic, loud humming noise. At first I thought it was like aliens coming to abduct me, but then I looked out the window and saw it was just a street cleaner. So, so this is what I was listening to for two hours last night while trying to fall asleep. As I'm sure you can imagine, that is a pretty hard sound to fall asleep to. So we slept in a little bit today. It's a little bit later in the day than I normally wake up, but we are currently still in the beautiful state of Utah in Richfield, which is about two and a half hours south of Salt Lake City. And uh, today we're gonna be hitting up some hot springs. But these hot springs aren't just your average, normal, everyday run-of-the-mill hot springs. They're some of the most unique hot springs that I've ever seen or been to, and I've been to quite a few since I've lived in my van. And it's called Mystic Hot Springs. And this will actually be my second time going there, but my first time making a video of it. Um, and essentially it's this guy who built these channels and mineral pillars and bathtubs and little soaking pools on the side of this hill out of the uh, naturally occurring geothermal water. And honestly, it looks so cool. And for breakfast today, we're keeping it pretty simple. We're just doing a classic breakfast sandwich. And every time I make a breakfast sandwich, I'm always too lazy to toast my bread. So this one's for all the people that tell me to toast my breakfast sandwich bread. But it is really cold out today, and the worst thing about the cold when you live in a van, if you don't have heated floors, and, and I kind of slacked on the uh, insulation that I installed in the floor because I didn't want to lose too much headroom so that I could stand up, so my floor is essentially uninsulated, and my toes are always cold when I'm walking around in the morning. The floor is like a sheet of ice. I'm hoping the snow stops before we uh, get to the hot springs, but I guess it wouldn't be the worst if it was still there. And we're only like 10 minutes away at this Walmart. Throw a little bit of tomato on there. And some mayonnaise. That's a quick, simple breakfast sandwich. I always hate when I have to drive somewhere right after cooking because I always have to wait for this top part to cool down enough so that I can put this sound dampening mat back on top of it. Because if I put it on there now, it would most likely melt. So I just gotta wait for this to cool down enough before I can throw that back on there and we can head out. But I guess in the meantime, I can just eat my breakfast sandwich. Delicious. And actually, while I wait for that to cool down, I'm gonna use this time to put on my bathing suit under all this warm clothes so I can jump in the hot springs. All right, I got the van all cleaned up from breakfast. Stove cooled down and I've got that closed up. So I need to get some like indoor slippers that I can wear inside the van because every time I get in here, I have to take them off kind of foyer area so I don't track dirt in here. But it's almost like I need another pair on the inside so that I can take these off and put on a new pair of slippers to keep my feet warm when I'm walking around on this ice cold floor. Anyways, oh no. My AirPods were sitting down in that cup holder and there was coffee leaked in there. Look at that. That is unfortunate. All right, so I just set those back on some napkins to hopefully dry out. They, the light was still on, but they were like almost crying. They were making this weird whimpery beeping sound like they were on their last breath. So hoping those aren't broken. That would not be a fun start to the day. So I think before we actually go into the hot springs themselves. I sent an email last night to um, who I think is the owner, or at least is a manager there, and asked him if he uh, would be interested in meeting up and kind of giving me the history of the place, because it is a really, really interesting place. And he emailed me back last night and said, yeah, that sounds like fun, so maybe he'll give us some sort of tour of the place, and then we're gonna jump in. I will say that I have never met a weatherman that's right. There was not supposed to be any rain or any snow in the forecast today, so not the most ideal weather for going to a hot spring. I'm hoping the rain stops before we go to get in. All right, so I think we're getting a little lucky. The rain is actually starting to die down. And the crazy thing about this hot spring is you would never know it was there unless you knew it was there, if that makes any sense. There's no sign saying, pull off here, Mystic Hot Springs. Mystic Hot Springs down this way. You would really never know about it unless you were reading online and saw it somewhere or something. But it's really back here, kind of just in the middle of this little town. So that is it right up there. You can kind of see the steam rising out of it, and I think this is parking for it right here. There we go. Mystic Hot Springs. I'm gonna go ahead and give him a call and see if, see if Matt's there. Mike, 
His name is Mike, now Matt. Hey, um, I just arrived from my 1 p.m. soaking pass, and um, I, I emailed Mike last night. Uh, if we could do it before, that's great. If after, that, that works just as fine, too. It's whatever's best for you. Okay, awesome. Sounds good. I'll, I'll give you a, a call whenever I'm done, uh, done in the hot springs. All right, so he's uh, in the middle of doing something right now, so he can't kind of give me a tour right away, but we're just going to go head up there and kind of hop in. I think I'm going to take most of my clothes off right now. So I don't have to carry all this bulk around when I'm up there. Soak it in the springs. All right, I'm leaving the hoodie on so I have something to walk back in that's warm. So they also have a uh, campground here and I won't talk too much about it before we kind of meet up with Mike and see what he shows us. But they got a bunch of old like school buses lined down there where I think you can stay or at least once we're Airbnbs, but you kind of just walk up through here. There's no real check-in process. Just once you get here, you kind of call, let them know that you're here, and then they kind of tell you how to get up there, but I've already been here, so I know you just kind of walk through this gate, up this hill, around this corner, around this weird house, and then <laughs> you're at the hot springs, so it's definitely a uh, unique experience. There's a bunch of geese up here or something. What's up, dudes? Coming soaking? Okay, I guess not, I guess not, okay. All right. Jeez. Yeah, there they are. See the steam coming off from the red rocks? that are formed from all the mineral deposits, but the really cool pool right behind this one, and it's man-made, but they, they made the water flow in such a way that it made this like overarching structure over the pool, so it's pretty neat. So that's it. That's that first hot spring that has that kind of elephant trunk looking thing going over it. Look at that. But well, I'm gonna go up here and check out the other ones first. It's so cool walking up here past all these, kind of, and this is what I'm talking about, those little channels and stuff, but basically they have bunch of different options. There's some hot tubs and stuff back there that they built. And then there's these kind of bathtubs. Looks like this one's closed. I don't think that one's open either, but just these little pools and bathtubs all over the place. This is one of them. And you just get in, they just built these bathtubs kind of into the rocks. And this is just full of nice, oh, very hot spring water. Look at that. And I think there's a couple other ones, but this is the only one that's open so we're gonna jump in all right here we go oh my god that's so hot oh, that's like searing hot I'm gonna slowly the water dripping off is burning my back this water dripping off is like burning me Oh. Oh. I guess going from 40 degree air to gotta be over 100 degree temperature water. It's not the quickest process, but this has gotta be one of the hottest hot springs I've ever been in. Though. Wow. And these hot springs are nice because there's constantly water flowing in and flowing out. So they constantly cycle through all of the water so you're not just sitting in stagnant pool water, essentially. It's pretty cool though, the uh, overgrowth from these like mineral deposits is like overgrown on these baths. They're almost like built into it at this point. And the views here are actually pretty good too. See the uh, mountain ranges off in the distance and the sun sets directly across over the uh, hill over there. So if you come here at sunset, it's really nice too. Um, last time I was here I was at sunset and the sky was completely clear. And I really don't remember these pools being this hot. This is ridiculous. It's like so hot I feel like I'm almost melting. I don't know how red my body looks, but it feels almost sunburnt. Pretty cool though. God, it's so hot. I can't stand in here. All right, that one's ridiculously hot, so I'm gonna go check out another pool. All right, so I'm walking over here hoping these kind of triple tubs are a little bit cooler than that one over there. They're kind of just set up at the base of this little mineral mound. Test them out. Oh, that's way cooler. This one's much nicer. Way less hot. All right, so a group of girls showed up at that other three sets of tub and I just didn't want to take it from them because there was like four of them and they were clearly a group. So the people that were in this tub just left. So I walked over here and they said that it's a little bit cooler than the other tub that's on the other side. So we're gonna give this one a try. And this one looks pretty cool too. That was my shorts. 
But yeah, this one's nice because it's also the most secluded of the tubs. It's kind of all the way up to the far right, and there's nothing that goes up past this way, so this is the last kind of tub. And then there's this big wall in between you and the rest of the uh, area, so it's pretty nice over here and it's not blazing hot, so I can sit in here comfortably. And it's also not too far from Salt Lake City, so if you're in the Salt Lake area or if you're anywhere near southern Utah, you should definitely come check this place out. Super neat little spot. All right, so the final one we're gonna go check out is kind of down here at the bottom with that mineral archway. I'm hoping these aren't too hot either. This one's not bad at all. It's almost like being in a water park with that little thing. It's like one of those uh, drip fountains. Pretty neat. Oh, that's hot. This one's definitely not as hot as that first one. It's a very comfortable temperature. And it's got this little like almost cave over here too. It's almost like Luray Caverns of Virginia with all these like stalagmite, stalactite looking things. All right, so we're just getting out of the tubs now. I just dried off, got my sweatshirt back on. Now we're going down to the uh, main house that's down there to meet with Mike and just kind of get a little backstory on the place, hear what it's all about, because I'm just genuinely curious. Hello, puppy. Hello. Yeah, cool. So, uh, yeah, you can here for a while. So, uh, um, but I'm sure you could just kind of go up and, you know. How's, how's it going? going? Ryan? Ryan? I heard your mystic mic. Yes, I am. I uh, read about it online. I've Are been you here built for, it? No, I've been here for 27, almost 28 years. Okay. So, yeah, so it was homesteaded back in 1882. So, there's been several owners over the hundred and whatever few years that's. 100 years it's been around? Well, since uh, 1882. Yeah, I noticed that one, that one bathtub, the first one that's past those three on mm -hmm. the close side, mm -hmm. that one was crazy hot today. Last was time it? I was here, it was a little bit lukewarm, but today it was scalding hot. Uh huh. Yeah, good. I mean, we change it up all the time. Uh huh. And uh, sometimes when the wind blows, we turn it up, and then we haven't been up there to turn it down after it calms down or something. So. Yeah. You have, any, you have anything that feeds into the house in like an internal hot tub or anything? Uh, there is one in there. We don't really use that too much. Because oh, I don't know if uh, I mentioned this, but I do live in my van too. Oh, cool. I travel around the country and I just go to cool places. I'm having an issue. Like I go to places and I kind of rush through them mm -hmm. in a way. And I, I'm trying to like slow down a little bit, take my pace and just meet people, say what's up and just see what, what comes of it. Because I feel like since I've been traveling, at least the, the better experience is when I meet with people as opposed to like just going and checking out some places. Mm -hmm. It's usually the people that are more interesting, but mm. um yeah, so I'm just trying to take it slower, meet some more people. So that's why I reached out. I was cool. Just wanted to get some more information on the place. But so what was the, uh, I guess, the philosophy behind building this place? Uh, one step at a time. There's three philosophies that I really like. Okay. That I've kind of distilled my life down to. Uh, the first one is mindfulness. Okay. So being present. So what that means to me is that my body, I sense my body, uh, what I'm thinking and how I'm feeling all at the same time. So if I kind of try and do that, it seems like something shifts in me, becomes the colors become a little brighter, you know, things become a little richer. And then the second thing is uh, uh, wabi-sabi, which is kind of this uh, imperfect perfect, the idea that everything's going away and nothing stays shiny for very long. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing's ever finished, nothing's, you know, nothing lasts and we're not trying to keep things just a certain way. We just allow for things to change. And, mm -hmm. and that the, the more they change and the more, you know, they're, they go through time, the more stories there are and the more interesting the things become. The third thing is uh, permaculture. So permaculture is about sustainability, about using nature as a guide. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot that uh, works well in nature. And so you can use those same principles in different ways. And so those are the three philosophies that kind of steer my life. A version of the philosophy is to go towards the things I like and away from the things I don't like mm -hmm. based on my own experience. So not what uh, Madison Avenue tells me or what other people, my peers might tell me is I should like or don't like or whatever. It's No, it's based on what I have experienced what I believe to be good or bad or whatever. The way we are, we kind of just kind of going through life and whatever happens, we're kind of your know, path of the least resistance or whatever you want to call it. You know, we're just kind of reacting and, and making choices without really thinking. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, you know, we don't re even know what we like or we don't like because we're just doing things because somebody told us we should do it mm -hmm. or the, the 
TV says we should like it or whatever that is, you know? So I think through that mindfulness and being able to kind of more acting and kind of choosing, you know, and evaluating. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people drink without actually like drinking. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's that's the biggest deal, too, is to, to try and bring that awareness down to the moment and make the best decisions you can, the best decisions for yourself, and then your community and the world, you know? Yeah, well, thank you very much. <laughs> you bet. I appreciate it. Yeah, nice to meet you. Hope you have a good rest of your day. Thanks, you too. All right, that was cool. Got a little bit of wisdom. Angry geese are back. Yeah, I was reading online that they call him Mystic Mike because of the Mystic Hot Springs, but that was kind of my first attempt at trying to meet more people along on this journey up to Alaska or wherever I end up going, because now that I'm not going to Alaska, I don't really have a plan yet for where I'm going. But I found that after driving all over the country and seeing all of the things that I've seen and doing all of the things that I've done, the fondest memories that I have are when I'm with other people or when I'm meeting other people. So I'm gonna hopefully try to integrate more of that into my travels. Before we get out of here and uh, head on to wherever we're going next, which I actually have no idea where I'm going next. I'm gonna get myself changed out of these wet clothes. And also another interesting fact about those hot springs is that there's no sulfur in them, so you don't smell bad or feel weird after getting out of them. So there's no need to shower, so I'm just gonna count that as my shower for the day. All right, so I just got myself all changed and tried to put my AirPods back in my ears. And this one has a very, very loud high-pitched ringing going on in it. And there's still watery coffee. In the case, they work. They just don't sound very normal. So I'm just gonna stick them in this tin with some rice and hopefully that dries them out. Even though I'm pretty sure I read online that putting your electronics that are waterlogged in rice pretty much does nothing, but we'll see. Got the headphones and rice. I think it's time to get out of here. Find a place to camp tonight. And I think I might head back to that Walmart that I stayed in last night, honestly, because now that we aren't heading north um, to Alaska, at least not right now, I've got to make up a whole new plan for where I want to go and things I want to see. And I don't really want to go north yet because I don't want to go through the places that I'm going to go on my way to Alaska and then kind of cycle back through them when I actually head up there in May. So I'm thinking I might head south or maybe west, I truly don't know. But in a way, that's a lot nicer because now I can take my time, go at a slower pace, see more things, do more things, and hopefully meet some more people. And I have a lot more freedom in the route that I want to take. There she is, home sweet home. The beautiful Richfield Walmart parking lot. Very nice. This Walmart's actually pretty beautiful. These, there's there's mountains pretty much all around it on this side, and then all along that side, and then there's, and then there's also some like all along the back, but it's also just very convenient to be able to run in and use an actual bathroom, so. I hate to say it, but I do enjoy staying in Walmart parking lots sometimes. And I am actually super excited that I am postponing the trip to Alaska, because I really didn't want to skip over a bunch of stuff and kind of rush my way up there. I want to take my time, and I want to really kind of experience it and, and put out the best content I can so that you guys can experience it as well as I'm driving up there. So it'll be nice to stay down south for a little while, hang out, check out the stuff, hang out with my girlfriend, go on my family vacation, and then head up north and hit all of the cool spots. And I can hear my AirPods ringing in the thing right now. But hit all the cool spots along the way. So I appreciate anyone who voted in the poll, took the time to go in there and uh, cast a vote or leave a comment or leave some advice for my trip up to Alaska. So you guys are awesome. I say it all the time. You guys are the best group of followers that any YouTube channel has. So really appreciate you. But now that we've found our home for the night in this beautiful Utah Walmart parking lot, I think I'm gonna head inside. One, to use the bathroom and two, grab myself some stuff to make some dinner. All right, so I was just walking around, and one thing that's always funny when you come to places that are in these higher elevations, sometimes the bags of chips are super puffed up from the drive over here, and I just think it's so funny. But I think tonight we're gonna be making some sort of like lettuce wrap because I already have most of the ingredients for it, so I just gotta pick up a few things. Then I do need a new welcome mat for my front door area because I threw my other one out. I just don't know if I like any of these or if any of these will fit. I mean, I kind of like that rubber one down there. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna get this one. If I don't like it, I can just come in and return it.
Only thing that sucks about parking so far back is I have to walk so far to make it back to the van from the store. We can throw down this new welcome mat like that. Beautiful. Now I've got somewhere to kind of wipe my feet off when I get into the van. So tonight's dinner is uh, super simple, but before we get started cooking anything, let me go ahead and make the sauce. And for that we need hoisin, two tablespoons of soy sauce, tablespoon of rice vinegar, half a tablespoon of sesame oil, some ginger, some garlic, and one diced shallot. And we can take all of that and mix it up. And that's the sauce. Next I just need to brown up this ground turkey and some sesame oil. And then we can add in our other ingredients and we're pretty much done. This is a super simple recipe. And while we wait for that to cook down, it was slightly frozen, which I didn't realize. I'm going to chop up these water chestnuts because I can only find sliced water chestnuts at the store and not dice. So I'm just gonna dice them up a little more. All right, now that we got this meat cooked, we can add in the water chestnuts, stir those in a little bit, and then pour over our sauce. All right, that looks like it's just about done. Turn that off, grab the lettuce wraps out of the fridge. And realistically, you could do this with any style of meat. You could add whatever seasonings you wanted and just throw them in a lettuce wrap and call it a day, call it a meal. Oh, so good. It's so nice because this is such a quick, easy meal. And then I have an extra half pound of meat in the pan to throw into rice bowls or whatever else I want to throughout the week. So I think I'm gonna try something out with this channel for where I'm gonna go next because I have absolutely no idea and I have absolutely no plan. If you guys want to, maybe this will be a fun idea, maybe it won't. Leave a comment below for where I should go next. It could be a general area, it could be a very specific location, it could be a restaurant, it could be a thing to do. It doesn't really matter. Leave a comment where you think I should go, where you want me to go. And out of the top five most liked comments, I will pick one and I will go there. It might not be the next video that I put out, but I will go there. All right, dinner is complete. Cleaned up the kitchen, still gotta do my dishes like usual but it is nighttime out here at Walmart. Not really much else to do when you park in a Walmart parking lot. I think I'm just gonna play some Xbox and then try to get to bed kinda early so I can get out of here early in the morning. So as always, I appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, think about clicking that subscribe button and I will catch you guys next time.